Next week's episode, Home Games, next Wednesday at 9 o'clock. Now, Comfort has a new low price, so you can afford Comfort softness on woolens, cottons, synthetics too. Try Comfort softness on all your things. Comfort, now at a new low price. The new Ford Capri. The difference between driving and just motoring. Performance, as sporting as you like. This new 3-litre gear does 0-60 in 9.5 seconds and 119 miles per hour. The well-proven suspension layout, long wheelbase and wide track gives safe, predictable handling. Space, if you don't want to carry four people, fold the back seats down and you get a massive 22 cubic feet of it. The new Capri gives you a lot more car than you expect. Performance, versatility, space. And for under £3,000 for the 1300 it'll cost you less than you think. You could win a new Ford Capri. There are seven Ford Capris to be won in the Daily Express. Win a new Capri. The details are in tomorrow's Daily Express. You know all about Mac Market's low price groceries, but what price are quality fresh foods? Look, streaky rashes, 53p a pound. Cooked shoulder, 14p a quarter. A choice of pâtés from 14p a quarter. Chesswood mushrooms, 32p a half. And there are many more at prices like these. All beautifully fresh and the quality is guaranteed. How do we do it? Well, fresh foods is where Mac's began. And it still shows. Mac Market, superb fresh foods, amazing prices. The first taste tells. The first taste tells. The first taste tells you it's every bit as good as it looks. And it's the same as new Stork SB margarine. This is nice. What's on it? New Stork SB. You see, Stork SB is now even better, with a smooth new look and a delicious new taste. So the first time you taste it, mm. you'll say... New Stork SB. Fancy calling new Stork SB margarine. Ideal Home Magazine have designed a remarkable show house for Selfridges on the fourth floor, full of great ideas for your home. Read all about it in the March issue, Your Ideal Home at Selfridges, an exhibition of modern living until March the 22nd. <laughs> What do we do with a drunken driver? What do we do with a drunken driver? What do we do with a drunken driver? La 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 what do we do with a drunken driver? What do we do with a drunken driver? What do we do with a drunken driver? Think before you drink, before you drive. XL Holidays have just released a new program to Greece. All scheduled flights, first-class hotels, good reductions for children even in high season, guaranteed prices. Phone 388-1122 for the XL Holidays brochure now. In just a few seconds' time, the latest news from ITN, and after that, football. Tonight, here at Villa Park, one of the world's greatest football stars has been turning on a glorious display of control skill. Yes, Johan Cruyff, the superstar of Barcelona, making his final appearance in England, is showing just how he earns half a million a year from football alone. His skill in the UEFA Cup, quarter-final tie between Aston Villa and Barcelona, will excite and entertain you in the midweek match tonight, right after the news. This is Thames from London. We now go over to Reginald Bosenket and Sandy Gall at ITN.
Good evening. A select committee has made another strong attack on a minister. This time, it's Mr. Dennis Howell. 195 people have escaped from a plane which went out of control on takeoff in Los Angeles. The IRA have used a new machine gun to kill a British soldier. An anti-communist movement in Angola has claimed that it's ex executed 139 Cubans and a little girl has been given back her sight. First, the committee and the minister. Backbench MPs have again attacked a minister for his handling of a nationalized industry. One of the environment ministers, Mr. Dennis Howell, is criticized for his treatment of the British Waterways Board, who run most of Britain's canals. It's only a week ago that the same committee on nationalized industries were attacking Mr. Varley and the British Steel Corporation. The MPs say Mr. Howell cast what they call an astonishing and unwarranted slur on the professional competence of the Waterways Board. They also say he doesn't appear to understand the proper role of a nationalized industry, and they recommend that responsibility for the waterways should be taken away from him and handed over to the Department of Transport. Mr. Howell says he's saving his reply for Parliament. Here's our political editor, Julian Haviland. So the Select Committee haven't lost their remarkable appetite for government ministers. They've taken quite a bite out of the hitherto cheerful person of Mr. Howell, who in between being Minister for Sport and looking after floods and droughts, is in charge of the nationalised British waterways. The committee say Mr. Howell doesn't understand how a nationalised industry should work. They say relations between the government and the waterways board are deplorable and they blame him. But Mr. Howell's unlucky perhaps to get so much stick. The committee show that the Waterways Board, ever since it was reconstituted ten years ago under a new and combative chairman, Sir Frank Price, has been fighting for its life against successive governments who've wanted to merge the canals with the water supply industry so that their upkeep will be paid for, as Sir Frank puts it, by ratepayers and the people who turn taps on. The committee, under its equally combative chairman, Mr Russell Kerr MP, backs Sir Frank all the way. They say the government's plans to kill off his board should be scrapped at once. And they agree with his belief that the canals have a commercial future for freight carrying, which the government don't seem to believe. In particular, they urge the government to go ahead with a scheme to raise the capacity of this canal, the Sheffield and South Yorkshire, to carry much bigger barges, mainly between Rotherham and Doncaster. Parliament's already approved, and the common market's ready to help pay. So it's a test case, the committee say, of the government's attitude. They say the government's characteristic dilatoriness has greatly increased the cost. The committee uphold the Waterways Board's complaint that they've never been allowed the money to manage the canals in the way Parliament has told them they must. For example, in 1970, they wanted £22 million to catch up on essential upkeep, neglected for years. By 1974, nothing had been done and the bill had risen to 37 and a half million. Now they say the cost will be at least 60 million pounds. They've just been promised five million, which is less, they say, than is needed for public safety. Sir Frank Price, when I talked to him today, was obviously...